today we're talking about um, our GM potato study, which is part of the Amiga project, which is an EU7 framework project. So why are we doing the study? Well, at the moment we have many challenges to the potato sector. One of the most important ones is that farmers have to spray 15 to 20 times per season to prevent the crop from falling down with blight disease. Potato blight disease, of course, is what we know caused the Irish potato famine. But in the last three to four years, we have much more novel and aggressive strains of blight that have entered into Ireland from the Netherlands and mainland Europe. In addition to that, we have EU legislation, which is cutting back on the amount of fungicides that are being used for our potato crops. So what are the options? Well, can we breed new resistant varieties? You can breed new resistant varieties, but it requires a minimum of about 13 to 15 years to breed a new variety. And then if you want to breed a variety that contains wild genes from a wild potato species, you're looking at up to 40 years. So that's a very long time to get a new, a new potato variety. If you want to go with GM, that's basically a process to accelerate the breeding. And that's pretty much what GM does. So at the moment, you can generate a GM potato variety in approximately 16 weeks um, versus the 13 to 14 years to generate a new variety. But is GM the answer? We don't know that. And that's what this study is about. Um, we need to assess and monitor the environmental impact of this particular GM potato, which has a single wild resistance gene against blight disease. We're not advocates of GM, we're advocates of public research, and that's very important. So that's the why. So what are we doing? Well, at the moment, we're part of uh, AmigaProject.eu, which is a European-wide project with 22 partners across 15 countries. And there's no industry involvement in this, in this work at all. This is public research with universities and public organisations such as Chagosk. The GM potato was developed at the University of Wageningen, where they took a gene from a wild potato species, which is Solanum venturii, and they put it into a commercial variety called Desiree, which has very poor resistance to blight disease, but is a very popular commercial variety. And these potatoes are called cisgenic uh, potatoes because they've taken a gene from a wild potato and put it into a commercial potato, so it's potato to potato. Transgenic would be tradi the traditional understanding of GM, and a transgenic would be taking a gene from a fish or from a tree and putting it into a, a potato or a wheat plant. The goals of the project is that we want to quantify the impact of this R gene or this resistance gene through the GM potato on soil microbes such as nematodes, but we all specifically want to determine the impact on blight disease itself. How quickly will blight evolve? And when it does evolve, what will it evolve into? And that's very important. So what have we done to date? Well, the field behind me has been planted this year with the GM potatoes. It contains 1,700 GM potato plants, 1,700 of the non-GM, and 1,700 of Sarpamira, which is a very good variety with up to five resistance genes in it as well. And the study from last year clearly showed that basically the GM versus the non-GM, the GM is standing up very well against iris strains of blight. And that's what we did last year with just 24 plants. This year is a much bigger study, and we hope at the end of this year to have more definitive results as to the impact of the GM potato. At the end of this year, we'll generate enough tubers for two more years of study, and then we'll have three years of solid data to release to the public and to the scientific community.